Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and this is just a little, little bit of a quick updatey type uh, video because I've not made a video in a, a week or two. And one of the reasons I've not been, uh, I've been incredibly busy. I've not been um, too well, and um, I've been busy doing uh, this. Basically, what I've done is, if you notice, this is where I've done most of my videos um, so far. Uh, new little bit of equipment, well not new, you've seen it before, but a uh, bit of equipment I've managed to dig out of storage and uh, bring up here because I've got a little more space. And if we uh, pan across, I've got a little uh, netbook up here now for um, accessing the internet while I work. But um, if we have a look here, I actually have some proper nice workspace now. And basically what happened was I was uh, travelling home one evening and I spotted that lovely piece of uh, worktop languishing in a skip. So that went into the back of my van and I've uh, basically what I've done is I've lowered my all my um, chairs. This is my where I've got all my vintage computers set up. If you notice there I could only just fit in that corner a little um, Amstrad green screen monitor in front of my um, 6128 and if you look now I've got a uh, full 14 inch colour monitor in the back there um, for my 6128 and the way I've done that basically is I've dropped this table um, down about 5 inches from where it actually was and I've got a chair that sits a little bit lower and it means that basically because this is the apex of the roof I can um, fit more things in there and can go further back as you can see I've got a uh, C64 set up there and a um, that Amiga 500 Plus set up there and if I was to go further around you can actually see there's an Atari uh, just poking its head out there but I've not got the monitor uh, sorted out for that one yet so we come back around to my uh, bench as you can see I've got some nice little drawers there with all my components in a uh, monitor set up for testing my desoldering and soldering stations actually set up properly so they're not just uh, ad hoc dig them out when I uh, need them. I've actually got them set up properly, ready and working there. A um, Farnell dual voltage um, current limiting power supply on top of that, which does need repair. Um, it was working last time I used it. It's not been used probably in about nearly 10 years and uh, it's not working at the moment. So that's going to be another nice little repair video. There is another little um, micro reg um, variable voltage power supply there on top of um, my drawers. Something in the middle of the shop which we'll be coming to um, later. We go up a little bit. We've got my uh, hot air rework station. I have a nice little uh, digital bench multimeter. My uh, I think it's a 20 megs. Is it 15 or 20 megs? Farnell. Um, Dual, dual channel oscilloscope and right at the end there we've got my uh, stag um, EEPROM eraser which is uh, like a nice industrial uh, EEPROM eraser we can uh, drop down and I have a little bit of storage underneath I've got an old IBM um, is a NetVista uh, Pentium 4 under there which is quite a handy uh, little computer because it's got a uh, 3.5 inch floppy drive on there and it's got serial and parallel ports and all the useful stuff and it's got um, XP on it. Um, I don't use that all the time but I've got it stuck under there for when I need it. I've managed to dig out my old um, 12 volt Hitachi cordless drill which is going to live up here from now on. That's literally, it's from about 1990. Um, I picked it up on a car boot sale a few years ago for not very much money. But I remember when I was a kid, um, it probably 89 or 90 uh, my friend's dad was an electrician and he just he just got one of them um, Hitachi 12 volt cordless drills it cost him an absolute fortune and we all were, were forever trying to pinch it off him and borrowing it for uh, various things that we were doing so um, that's going to live up here from now on for any drilling needs I uh, need we may even go into looking at perhaps building some new batteries for it it's still got its original two 12 volt uh, NICAD battery packs and they don't last very long nowadays so we may look at perhaps uh, building some new batteries for that obviously then we've got some more um, storage space there and uh, really that's about it but like I said this is a, a much nicer spot for uh, working on um, we've got our anti-static mat in the middle 
And now let's get on to um, the next part of this video, which is this uh, intriguing little bo box that's on the uh, middle of my uh, bench. Now I won't bother with any cutting here, we'll just um, move the tripod a bit closer so you can see what this thing is. Now I picked this up on um, eBay the other day and this has got to be the quickest postage I have ever had from eBay in my life. I paid for this, um, I think, literally like Saturday evening and it arrived this morning. So that's absolutely unbelievable um, service and especially considering I paid a tenner for this and it was shown working and um, basically what we've got is a far I think it's pronounced Furby a Farby um, LA160 logic analyzer now that's exactly what this is um, it's a um, 20 megahertz 16 channel log logic analyzer now most people that expect to see a logic analyzer expect to see something looking a bit more like that a bit like my oscilloscope not like a little box like that unless you think about like the modern USB uh, type logic analyzers and this is sort of like the predecessor predecessor sorry to those as in to use its full capabilities what you actually do is you connect this up to a PC and it has RS232 output on the bottom and you run some software on the PC and it allows you the logic analyzer basically to do its main display on the computer rather than on its little Unbuilt display. It is apparently very, very quite powerful for its day. Um, it will show all the um, states on this up to 15 there. Um, all its uh, high low states actually on this little um, LED display there. I do have the manual for it, which I managed to uh, download. And I have some modern um, software which apparently will work with this and will work under windows with visual but i think it's made in uh, visual basic designed to run under windows which will actually um, communicate with this and allow it to um, display on a modern pc or at least a modernish pc with a serial port but apparently there is some software i think it's called um la something or other um la transfer or la talk or something like that which uh, was an original piece of software developed when this was current. This was from the early 1980s. I think the date starts with making them in about 1983 up till the late 1980s. And the software that was originally developed for these was designed to run um, on MS-DOS. In fact, uh, it said you needed a MS -DOS, an XT-compatible computer running a CJ monitor uh, with like 196k of memory and a 360k floppy drive um, so we're not talking like serious computing hardware to run the original software this would have um, worked with but unfortunately I don't have that software I do have the modern software but I would really really like to find the original software for this and perhaps um, get it set up with uh, like my old original IBM PC or that um, perhaps that Zenith 286 that I showed in a uh, previous video that we got working that'd be really cool to um, run with this and actually use it with a vintage PC as a logic analyzer um, I have no pods or anything for it but I do have from I think the website is called Sonic Sheep I uh, found it online a guy who's done quite a lot of um, work with this and he actually is the one that wrote the modern software for these now that guy um, this uh, Sonic Sheep site um, what was I um, about to say oh yeah he has the um, wiring diagram for some of the um, pods that you can actually connect to this thing because it can actually um, natively just on these connectors um, you've only got 5 volt logic with the pods you know it's got safety protection and things like that in it so you can't actually fry the thing by um, over vaulting it and uh, things like that so before I actually go into actually doing anything serious with this, I probably will make one of these um, pods and um, try it that way. What I am going to do, I'll just power it up now and show you what it actually that it actually does work. And it actually, actually has got the latest um, BIOS revision in it. Apparently there was various different revisions of BIOS that these um, came with. And this does have um, version 50, which is the uh, latest one. I don't know whether it's got the additional communications ROM in it yet, which is apparently needed for the original software to communicate with it, but we can look into that 
future. I've not even opened this thing up yet. As you can see, we've got um, 16 old B. B means it's the 20 megahertz version. A is a uh, 10 megahertz version. So this is the uh, 20 megahertz version of this. And as you can see, it's come up ready. It does seem to actually function as it's meant to. I haven't a clue yet how to actually um, do anything with it. I think I've probably crashed it there or um, done something I shouldn't have done. So I haven't got a clue actually how to do anything with it um, yet. I will have to read the manual on it. But um, I thought it was just too too good an opportunity to miss when I put a tenner bid on it. And now, like I said, I won it at a tenner with about eight quid postage on it. So yeah, it's cost me 18 quid in total. Uh, looking online, what I have been told is uh, probably a very good thing to do is to open this thing up and just check the condition of the battery inside it because it does have a little um, battery backup inside it and they are apparently prone to leaking so uh, my battery is about to fail on my camera but we will at least just try and do this um, before the battery goes flat on my camera so uh, this might be a very very uh, this video might stop quite uh, quite abruptly if my um, battery fails but we'll see what we can do and unfortunately, with this um, annoying little JVC camera, you can't record and charge the battery at the same time. As soon as you uh, plug the um, card in to charge the uh, camera, it switches off. Which is a little bit annoying. I am still trying to save up and look for a better camera because, as though the video quality is not too bad on this camera, the um, audio quality is absolutely appalling on it. So. I do want to address that. I was considering going inside it and see if I could uh, perhaps remove the microphone and um, put a line in into it so I can run an external uh, microphone. But at the moment, as I don't have a better camera, if I bugger it up, then we're going to be stuck. Um, you'll have some very nice visuals, but um, you won't be able to hear me. Or I'll have to run an additional record feed and record my audio separately and then splice it all together. And quite frankly, I just don't have time to uh, do anything like that at the moment. I'm incredibly busy with um, some projects, work-related projects. There we go, last screw out. And we can um, have a look inside this thing and see what we actually uh, what's actually in there. I have managed to get hold of the service manual for this um, as well, if there is any uh, problems. There is some damage, I don't know if you can see, there is some damage to the case there, and unfortunately, uh, that's due to the um, the seller thinking it was a good idea to wrap one layer of bubble wrap around this thing, and then seal it in a um, bin liner, wrap it in a bin liner, and stick the shipping label on it. So unfortunately, there is a little bit of plastic damage there, but it's not the end of the world. Let's see if we can, there we go, we are, uh, we can get inside it. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Get the top off. If it wants to. There we go. Oh, look. Now, I do believe... There's the uh, Type 50 ROM for the, um, that's your, uh, like I said, that's the version ROM for the actual firmware on side it. And I do believe that that there is the additional, um, the additional ROM you need to use with the um, original software for it. So that is rather good. But what we wanted to look at, and I am absolutely delighted, it may have actually been replaced already. I just can't see any corrosion on it, but uh, this Varta battery there, that's definitely been replaced. That's definitely, definitely been replaced because it's got 098 on it. So I think that's a 98 vintage, and this is from the 80s. In fact, if we look at some of the other chips on there, what have we got? We've got a um, 65... Oh, we've got 6502, and we've got 652. So this is basically... <laughs> You've got a uh, BBC, Commodore 64, anything like that in here. It's a 6502 processor, 6522 um, glue logic for the um, processor. Got some RAM down there. 
um, but like I said no I can't see any leakage on um, that battery so I will leave that for now what we're going to say we can see roughly when this was made the chips are all 85 84 Let's see if we can see anything else um, well, that's 92 that could be a replacement um, can't see any of the other chips let's see what's that one no, I can't see a date code on anything else. Um, you don't usually get it on a lot of the um, 74 series. Let's have a look over there. 84, yeah. Um, 84, 83. So we're looking around 83, 84 vintage for this um, this fantastic piece of equipment. But yeah, uh, it's also, unlike like later and more expensive logic analyzers, as you can see, it's all based on 74 series logic. On a 6502 processor, 6522, uh, basic ROMs, um, SRAM. There's very little in here that could go wrong that could actually cause you to not be able to repair it. Some of like the HP logic analyzers, they use custom chips, and if some of them custom chips fail, um, you ain't going to find replacements, at least not at a sensible price. Um, like I said, this thing, I am. Um, the ROMs you can um, there are online um, dumps of these ROMs so you can get um, flash a new ROM if a ROM was to fail and all like I said all the rest of these components are really are just off the shelf so this is really is rather a nice little unit um, and I look forward to uh, perhaps doing some more with it and definitely getting it connected up to a a modern or a um, not a modern a vintage um, PC and uh, actually see if we can use it as a logic analyzer with um, some vintage that gone back together yeah obviously made in quite small quantities because this is just like a standard project case that you would buy for um, building like hobby style projects small run equipment I haven't got a clue how much this thing costs you I will really see if I can find that out I know that RS um, sold their own version of this thing. Um, I think branded on the, under their own name. This manual that I've got is actually for the um, for the RS version of it. But it is exactly the same unit as I have here. It's like I say, it's just their um, they branded it for their own thing, a bit like uh, I think Farnell do. Um, with their oscilloscopes, they're not made by um, Farnell. I think the Farnell oscilloscopes are some Japanese make, and they just stick their own uh, brand on them. So the RS did the same thing with this. So yeah, I'd say I'm not making a uh, long video here today or anything. It's just a quick look at the new workshop, look at um, some of the nice new things that I've got, and um, a quick look to show you uh, what I picked up over the weekend so yeah I'm going to leave it there for now because my battery is j literally just about to expire so uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye